James Burnham's book, The Managerial Revolution, is an absolutely essential read for those who want to understand why we find ourselves in the world we do today. Not everything that Burnham predicted in 1940 came true, but his theory got far more right than it got wrong, and anything with that kind of explanatory power was begging for an update to bring it in line with today's world. The conservative author and intellectual Sam Francis was kind enough to do exactly that in his book Leviathan and Its Enemies. And in this video, we will be using the first chapter of that book to help us explore the nature and origins of the managerial elite that have come to dominate every aspect of our society. According to Francis, the managerial elite are a product of the massification of society. Mass production led to mass consumption, mass markets, mass corporations, and the mass state. As the advantage of scale and centralization became overwhelming, mass organizations came to dominate every aspect of life, from government to business to education to media and even religion. These mass organizations were very complex and required a very specific and technical type of knowledge and expertise in order to operate. And this gave rise to a new group of people who were trained to operate and guide these mass organizations, the managerial class. And as a result, the mass bureaucratic organization became the default organizational structure for most institutions in society. Francis says that before this massification, the capitalists had been the dominant elites in society, with traditional structures limiting mass organizations in order to protect the regional autonomy on which their power relied. But as the advantages of mass centralization became apparent, the bourgeoisie had to relax these restrictions and allow large organizations to develop in order to stay competitive. And eventually, a conflict would develop between the new elites who managed these mass organizations and the bourgeoisie who had founded them and whose capital was still necessary for those organizations to continue to grow. The bourgeoisie and the managers began with a symbiotic relationship, with the managers needing the capital and the security provided by the bourgeoisie, and the bourgeoisie needing the technical expertise and efficiency provided by the managers in order to outcompete those around them. But this relationship quickly grew in balance as the interests of managers and the bourgeoisie diverged. Management, after all, is essentially the science of operating massive and complex organizations. And managers become more powerful and essential as the organization grows and becomes more complex. So their primary incentive is not actually the original stated mission of the organization, not to deliver a particular service or product to the end user, or even necessarily return the highest profit to the owner. Instead, their incentive is to increase the size and the complexity of the organization, making themselves indispensable, increasing their power within the organization, and also increasing their ability to demand a bigger share of the profits for themselves. For those familiar with my previous videos, you'll recognize Conquest's third law in action right here. With ownership and operation separated, the stated interests and functional interests of the organization begin to diverge, in small ways at first, and then in increasingly jarring ways. Understanding the conflict as a purely economic one is a mistake. This organizational model is impacting every single institution in society, and the economic battle is only one aspect of a broader civilizational conflict, where managers challenge all the structures and institutions that were part of the bourgeoisie order, including moral and social codes, political institutions, and religious organizations. Francis says that subverting these institutions is key to allowing the expansion of the mass corporation, mass society, and the mass state, and that is essential to facilitating managerial power. 
Diversity, the real kind that comes from localized society and culture, is the enemy of centralization and must be broken down in order to promote the hegemony that allows for mass production, mass consumption, and mass media. Francis says, quote, The corporation must promote the homogenization of society because of the nature of mass production and mass consumption. Mass production requires not only homogeneous goods and services produced by the same molds and processes, but also homogeneous consumers who cannot vary in their tastes, values, and patterns of consumption and who must consume if the planning of the corporation is to be effective. The comparatively compact and differentiated institutions of the bourgeoisie order sustain its heterogeneity and constrain the consumption of mass-produced goods and services. Managerial capitalism must therefore articulate and sponsor an ideology of cosmopolitanism that asserts universal identities, values, and loyalties, challenges the differentiations of the bourgeoisie order, and rationalizes the process of homogenization. In the cosmopolitan view of man, family, local community, Community, religious sect, social class, sexual and racial identity, and moral character are at best subordinate considerations and are regarded as artificial, repressive, and obsolete barriers to the fulfillment of human potential. Cosmopolitanism thus rationalizes the adoption of the mass framework and the collective disciplines that characterize the managerial regime and the homogenization of production and consumption through which the multinational organization and economies of managerial capitalism operate. End quote. This homogenization dissolves the differences between corporation and state because the elites that emerge assume control of those organizations in essentially the same way. The technical knowledge required to direct the organizations and the manipulation of public opinion required to sell a product to consumers or a political project to voters is increasingly similar. Francis says that law also becomes an important battlefield in the war between the old bourgeoisie and the new managerial elites. Just as the bourgeoisie used the principles of rule of law and equality before the law to limit and deconstruct the power of monarchs in the 18th and 19th century, the managerial elite seek to shift the law towards results-based administrative procedure. Determinations in legal proceedings are increasingly dependent on experts who are part of the managerial class and their value increasingly rests on their ability to produce the types of economic and cultural changes desired by those social engineers. Francis also cites Christopher Lash's assertion that managerial elites justify their expansion of power through what he calls the therapeutic state. The therapeutic state treats social ills like crime, war, ignorance, and poverty not as part of the human condition, but as social pathologies that are the result of autonomous social institutions which were the cornerstone of bourgeoisie order. Parents, churches, and other troublesome spheres of individual influence become the sources of ills that can only be cured through the bureaucratic administration of scientifically developed therapies. This dissolving of key social bonds allows the state and economy to merge in a more complete fashion and prepares the way for the final attack on the remains of bourgeoisie power. Francis says, quote, the fusion of the economy with the state in the managerial regime enables the managers in the state sector to attack the economic centers of the bourgeoisie power base by undermining the productivity and autonomy of the entrepreneurial firm. The assault on entrepreneurial capitalism also weakens the social institutions, political power, and ideologies of the bourgeoisie elite by bringing the hard property under attack from the regulatory and interventionist policies of the managerial state. 
but the state also undertakes political reforms and programs of social engineering that subvert the bourgeoisie elite more directly. The ostensible purpose of the political and social reforms is to ameliorate the material conditions of the masses, oppressed by bourgeoisie selfishness and parochialism, and indeed this purpose is often sincere in the minds of the managers themselves. Whether sincere or not, however, the real effect of managerial political and social reforms is to level bourgeoisie differentiations to liberate the masses from the tyranny of bourgeoisie or prescriptive institutions and to homogenize the mass population and bring it under the discipline of the mass organizations. The alliance of mass and managers against the bourgeoisie constitutes the political basis of managerial Caesarism. End quote. With how easily government, media, corporations, and other social institutions can work together to dictate the behavior of the masses, driving attention and consumption from one crisis to the next with barely any transition in between, it's getting harder and harder to deny that the managerial state has already come to pass. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please go ahead and click like. If you haven't subscribed, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or you'd like to support me on Subscribestar like these amazing people do that you're seeing on screen right now, you can go ahead and follow the links that are below the video in the description. That's also where you'll find links to things like my Gab, my merch store, and my Rumble and Odyssey channels if you'd prefer to watch on those platforms. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, I'll talk to you next time.